Hello everyone, a very good evening. Drivers, data entry operators, customer service representatives, librarians, retail POS operators, mailroom operators. What's common among these professions is that they might not exist 25 years from now. What has been our primary advantage in the global markets? The cost of labor is being challenged. The scenes are flipping more rapidly due to COVID-19 and automation is taking the center stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this session of Chatinar, where we'll be discussing making automation trending in Indian businesses. I take pride in introducing our panel today. We have Murli Sundaram, who is a very seasoned technologist in the consulting business for 25 years. He has always made sure that he stays ahead of the technological transformation curve. Currently, he's focusing on circular eco economy, 3D printing, extended realities, digital twinning and blockchain and he's also advising a lot of startups in these spaces so i think he'll be bringing us the startup perspective and the end customer perspectives to this discussion we have sarika malhotra who is one of the very few successful and renowned women in technology in india she is the ceo of c3it c3it is a gold partner of microsoft providing business productivity solutions sarika um, is very passionate about bringing uh, diversity and inclusion to workplaces and we have Pritam Gupta with us uh, he's the head of strategic accounts at automation anywhere uh, prior to this he has been the chief operating officer and the head of RPA practice of Probotic. Probotic is a startup that's delivering automation solutions to Indian businesses and we have Suhas Dutta he is the co-founder and partner of 39 consulting. 39 provides strategic advisory and execution consulting in the digital transformation and RPA to bring organizations effectiveness and to drive the business growth. Trinayan primarily focuses on Indian markets as well. So I'm sure he has a lot of interesting anecdotes to share to this discussion. And finally, me, I'm Papita Mohan. I'm the co-founder and head of consulting at Adray, a digital marketing services company. And I'm also part of some Bistic consulting initiatives. Let's jumpstart the session with a very critical question, right? If you take the definition of automation in, in its simplest form, Automation is something that will reduce the human effort or minimize the human intervention. So historically, whatever we have been doing is automation, but suddenly there's a splurge in the nomenclature with hyper automation, intelligent automation, robotic process automation, AI and ML. So are these various, various levels in the spectrum of, spectrum of automation or are these anything else? I think I'll open this question to Pritam Gupta because he's been in RPA and in intelligent automation now. And the other speakers will bring in their perspectives right after Pritam. Thank you, Papita. So I'd like to start with this uh, quotation that uh, if we don't automate, somebody else will automate and take our jobs anyway. So automation has always been embedded uh, into the human psyche right from the beginning when human beings started uh, inventing the wheel and trying to automate uh, as much as possible, right? Like, you know, we have continuously automated and we have only grown. I would say automation is a hallmark of human evolution. I'd like to take you back all the way to the uh, uh, first uh, industrial revolution. Uh, so this is when the Ford invented the Model T on an assembly line kind of a manufacturing platform. So prior to that, all the manufacturing were done in a ad hoc manner, in a job work kind of a manner. So once uh, Ford invented this kind of a model, a lot of people protested, a lot of afraid and scared that go away. This kind of an industrialized and uh, platform manufacturing only grew and created exponential number of jobs because today, whatever we do, whatever we wear, whatever we use for writing, etc., etc., is all as a result of industrial manufacturing, which was the product of automation. So I would say in a way that like, you know, whatever automation we are achieving in the software world, this will only lead us to more exponential number of jobs. And the future is something that none of us have seen. But all I can say is the future is going to be so much more exciting because human beings are going to remove the robot out of a human being and focus only on some cognitive kind of activities. So uh, this this is what I'd like to sort of uh, set the stage with. Babita, I'm going to assume that we will be talking about process automation today, unlike, let's say, hardware or, or mechanical or, uh, automation or actual robotic automation, which you find, let's say, with robotic arms, which could be in a warehouse, which could be at, at a surgery and, and so on. Yeah, I think so. That is our focus today, process automation, because I, I do realize and why you're setting the stage, because automation tends to become a very vast term otherwise. 
so uh, sarika uh, from your experience uh, just wanted to understand process automation was always there right like it was there since we started writing code we wanted to automate uh, so many things which were very mundane and repeatable only what's happened of late in the last 5 to 7 years is like you know people have packaged this really well and given it a name called uh, robotic process automation uh, intelligent automation now it's called hyper automation the, the names keep coming right so uh, what do you see as a drastic change since uh, let's say uh, these terms were coined or packaged versus how it was previously that's an interesting question and i mean we'll obviously stick to the context of india though uh, we you know kind of i've looked at process automation because our company c3 it we do this is this is what we do bulk a uh, bulk of our projects are like this which is you know automating manual processes or also reengineering them so uh, what i've seen is that yes as you rightly said you know i mean man ha- has always tried to kind of remove the boring and the repetitive tasks from you know his purview and get a machine or a computer to do those so that you know they we could ourselves do more interesting and value added work focus on innovation because i mean you always as a human being i think you always want to do something which taxes your abilities and you know you, very few people want to do repetitive work even if you started with this and that's where machines uh, you know come in and are very good at that and, but i think this has become you know this has really accelerated in the past future because it was it is now no longer about i mean automation is a given let me just first say that it is a given that if you want to compete in the industry whatever business you may be in you you may be in retail you may be in insurance you may be in banking if you want to be competitive if you want to ensure good customer service and more importantly most importantly i think one of the thing that has driven it is compliance there have been so many uh, you know instances we've seen where uh, compliance to basic sops has got lost as organizations have grown simply because it was you know people change it's difficult to train people it's difficult to ensure timely compliance and this can have huge penalties as you know countries uh, kind of implement more and more strict data uh, governance laws and all those aspects so this this also has been a key driver of fast forwarding automation so whenever you know compliance fails it typically comes on hey this person didn't do his job unfortunately that's how it comes and people immediately jump to hey how can i automate this process make it more reliable because a computer will not forget a computer once it learns a job will do it repetitively in the same way and of course there will be manual intervention always but you reduce the chances of errors and you're pretty confident that a process which works well once will work uh, well um, uh, you know 100 times and i think that has been one of the key drivers and the second driver which we're seeing now has been covid i think with covid a lot of industries realized you know how fragile the whole whole supply chain for example was with so many manual interfaces which just broke with with the lockdowns and with people say returning or migrating to their you know villages and native towns and that's another place where people are now scrambling to find systems and and you know uh, say um, uh, processes to kind of eliminate that dependence on specific people or specific skills and move that that is also we are seeing as a key driver thank you sarika for the perspective uh, so i just wanted to sort of uh, narrow it down to uh, make the indian automation ecosystem process automation ecosystem right like you know coming down uh, so my question to murli sir is like you know sir uh, what do you think are the major impediments or the barriers for indian businesses to adapt these kind of uh, process automation is it the cost element that comes in because already the uh, uh, the uh, the manpower cost in india is pretty much low or is it because like indians are risk averse to sort of like you know taking uh, that step towards uh, bringing in softwares to do the process automation just want to gather your perspective on it okay yeah i think the primary thing has been the traditional fear of job losses because we have a huge population we have a lot of unskilled labor which if they do not do what they are doing there are very few alternatives alternative job opportunities for them that has always been a fear and the unions of course kind of uh, kind of uh, enhance that fear but i think this is age old and you know like if you remember when the as you rightly said when the industrial revolution came or when the you know the computers came this was always a fear and every time we have seen that you know we move uh, one step up 
in say the level of automation that we have you always end up creating more value added jobs for the human element in the chain and moving out you know the repetitive and the boring kind of work so this has this is even today is a fair i mean i'm i'm telling you we uh, we work with customers so like we work with uh, transunion we've been talking to them they have a customer service team of 25 people and we said okay if you automate a process you know this will bring it down by 70% you'll be able to work with 30% of your people it's all repetitive work the nature of the customer service questions which come are repetitive you know my password needs a reset my username is not working i didn't receive my invoice blah 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 but the fear is always that oh my god you know this will result in job loss and so what we we are always guiding our customers that yes you need to first plan for those people and figure out the value added or the skill upgradations they need because until you do that and they are confident that yes now i've got this additional skill and i can you know i have this opportunity in the same organization you can't do this in an indian setup you can't simply say that i have a 25 people team i'm bringing down to six people because i'm automating a process that just doesn't work you have to first plan the the alternate um, so so the way i looked at it you know I, while i agree with some of the perspective offered by our um, expert uh, folks um, i think the one that is driving the automation is uh, is is the technologies the new technologies that are coming up gives us more opportunities in terms of both in terms of business delivery and technology delivery service delivery you have several innovation opportunities for you to look at automation in a completely different perspective right you know you could go on with cloud with uh, uh, iot with uh, vr ar with even voice i could say in voice i have already seen something like a jugaad that is happening in our street vendors they have already automating uh, some of the activities that they typically used to do right so so from the automation perspective i would think that as long as the user has the direct benefit there will be adoption so i think most of the time the blind spot for most of the uh, automation solution is that they are not having a holistic perspective about how they are developing a solution if you will right it could be at the front end it could be at the back end but ultimately it is the uh, user perspective that one needs to include into that the second one is that uh, sarika has already said and this is the compliance right you know there could be compliance uh, regulation that you need to worry about uh, if they are not done it already they have to do it that's where that automation opportunity is there and you have to necessarily do that as well the challenge with the the automation implementation is sometimes the compliance requirements are not met then you become liable and the number of instances that are violating the compliances because automation is not properly implemented could also you know skyrocket for you so you know that is another one that the executives are uh, worried about right you know is the process stable is it standardized can i rely on it is it error free then only you can automate but you know if you try to do an automation that is error prone or it has some error then the problem is the errors will come at an automation speed so you have pile of errors that you need to handle you know that is another perspective uh, that uh, one need to look at the final one is um, some of the legal issues that could potentially come due to liability that could happen because of an error that could potentially happen so the challenge is that if something goes wrong most of the software companies have a, a disclaimer clause you know they are not responsible for it so in case of an accident who is responsible for it is it software or the person who is writing the code or is it the tester who has probably failed it or is it a bug that is in the system or is it the entire system that is uh, made that error you know it's, it's a very complicated situation so in 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 uh, making complex business scenario uh, executives are thinking a while before implementing an automation because there are severe 
liabilities uh, that are associated with the service delivery you know somebody like equifax uh, on the insurance side especially even even you can take an autonomous vehicle right uh, that is motivating a lot of automation thoughts around people to say you no know, why can't i take that and do automation here but the challenge is if an autonomous car gets into an accident who is liable for it we don't have an answer today right so those are some of the impediments at the ground level that the indian uh, industries are facing both at the i would say user interface level at the back end and also at the executive level uh, those challenges need to be prevented and worked on to make it happen i think extending this discussion is it, is is the adoption really driven by compliance and uh, uh, the accuracy that's expected out of a process and is it limited by uh, the fear of job loss or uh, liability that would arise what are the key industry use cases where automation has become a norm and what are the laggards where uh, there's a lot of potential for automation but that, that has not happened it uh, particularly with stringent labor laws like we discussed sarika how how do you see these businesses adopting adop- automation while balancing their workforce particularly the frontline workers what we are seeing in our you know in the various engagements that we do with customers so there are some traditional uh, industries where automation and when we are talking about automation of course we are right now talking about business process automation once again to kind of clarify that so for example uh, banking and finance you know they have traditionally been the leaders in adopting back office automation they they always had a lot of uh, processes and they've been leading in this so they were traditionally the first one so even when we look at when say i'm not i'm talking of conventional business process automation which meant say just moving from say paper or an excel file to an automated process right not even i'm not even going to a robot or a bot based process but even when rpa came in we saw the finance industry as you know as leading adopters of this uh, this process right they they have a lot of compliances to do there's a lot of repetitive back office work with the finance does uh, so they they were leading adopters but if i go to the other uh, you know kind of end of the spectrum which is say manufacturing we've seen very low adoption over there a very conservative you know kind of an approach to automation typically so there are two ends of the spectrum and that is largely been because these industries have traditionally been like this finance was always one of the bfs has been one of the leaders in kind of you know adopting these kind of automations that's how it's been right or wrong and we are seeing the same thing now as rpa is coming in that you know you see them adopting it first and you see the the laggards you know kind of following waiting for the concept to be proven based waiting to see successful you know uh, successful engagements happen in the industry number one number two it's also about the expertise and i want to refer to what mudli said that you know it's not just software so you don't just need a technology provider to automate a process it's not just about writing code first and foremost you need people who understand the domain they have to understand the process itself because when you automate a process you don't say okay i am doing it like this manually now let me just take this and put this on a computer that is not the best way to automate a process right uh, when because when you shift to automation there is there are so many steps which can uh, you know just typically go away uh, which are being done because the process was designed for a manual process i'll give you an example we have a customer taj hotels now they have about 25000 of their employees and about 25000 additional pool of contract people who need to be allocated work every month based on the demand forecast of how the hotel occupancy is going to be now they do it on huge charts of paper okay they create huge excel sheets which are printed out a lot of people get involved in this process and there's a lot of skill which they have simply because they've been doing it doing it for many years and they go tick marking okay so to to be very very uh, to optimize basically how many contract people do i need to take over and above my my uh, captive workforce so it's a process errors get made because it's manual instead of tick marking in this box i tick marked in different box and all those kind of things now this process of printing charts and all was built for a manual process now when you want to ta- automate this process would you really create those huge charts of paper on a software uh, to use in a small computer scale you can but is it practical i keep scrolling endlessly no so you have to reengineer the process and break it up break it up into smaller pieces and also see what can i automate can i provide some business rules which can automatically make some decisions for me so that i don't have to do it manually you know can i uh, can i based on my experience and say okay if this is the if this is the demand you know if this is the number of guests which are staying in the hotel i need 
x percentage housekeeping people i need y percentage uh, cleaners etc etc so you need to improve the process and which is many a times called optimization or reengineering of the process so it's not just a software programmer you need domain experts without that i would feel automation uh, cannot deal the desired results and that has also been a challenge in the industry coming back to leaders and laggards you have more expertise today in the financial domain because they were the leaders and there are many more people who can guide you on how to say automate a bank reconciliation process there is huge number of people i mean there are ready products now available to reconcile uh, to automate this process but if i again go to the manufacturing industry there are very few uh, you know commoditized or you know platforms available and very little knowledge available to do this process yeah i agree with uh, sarika that like you know a um, few points that like if you do not optimize the process and if you do not reengineer it to suit the automation then you're putting good money after bad money and you're just uh, wasting the whole effort financial industry has always been the early adopters uh, beat india or beat elsewhere so similarly uh, where i work in currently at automation anywhere uh, the largest bot deployments you see are in the financial industry like there are like few thousand bots and similarly uh, the lowest hanging fruits for other uh, companies beat manufacturing or pharma or Uh, automobile or anything would again be their finance vertical right like you know within their finance and accounting they have tons of these repetitive manual tasks which uh, and, and even like you know uh, certain tasks which uh, require a lot of audit checkpoints etc which again are the low hanging fruits this is where i think we need to sort of condition the indian businesses as well to identify and go after these processes which give us like quick results these are just to sort of like you know remove those impediments in the business leaders head if the process selection as such is something at the very beginning which is very complex then unfortunately this takes a very longer route and which doesn't yield result now so for most of our clients when we talk to them we tell them like you know just go after quick and easy processes just reengineer that and then we shall talk about putting the bots on top of that uh, so that's that's like a much better approach let, yeah, let me chime in a little bit so uh, i i see all this from more from a business point of view of how money gets spent and how uh, money is supposed to come back i do not necessarily always look at it from just the technology point of view just that bot yeah pritham i'm going to uh, put your feet to fire a little bit pardon me for doing that so what i i as a strat consultant see in most of these type of situations you know is product companies in most cases come and try and sell a point solution that actually takes my goat because a point solution for rpa or from digital for digital transformation or any of these doesn't really do it you can choose to do one pilot you can choose to do one poc and that isn't it you are trying to run a business it's not about a technology solution which will run that entire business but trying and reshaping your business in the way it should be run in the future now onwards right so if, if you were to be looking at that if you were to be thinking about that then you start looking at an overall landscape in most of these cases i see technologists my counterparts product companies services companies very often come in and try and figure out here's how the implementation is going to work what i see in many cases unfortunately is nobody is thinking about i mean nobody of course is a blanket statement nobody is thinking about what happens after implementation when this stuff is actually running when it's supposed to be a bau you get into situations in many many of these companies where roi isn't coming up because in implementation i'm just throwing one example what ends up happening is the rest of the infrastructure the rest of the it infrastructure is still old it's still legacy it still doesn't talk to each other different business processes don't integrate too well and now you have one set of bots one platform working maybe over a period of time there's a second other different other platform which comes in these obviously don't talk so you start adding orchestration to have an orchestration layer then you start talking about all right i need to have an atc right like a knock i'll have a automation aoc so you now you need human beings on top of that your legacy infrastructure breaks somewhere or your legacy it causes a change which now causes downstream a bot to die not the bot's fault but it's died because of something else right and when that, that happens now you need a human being to be able to locate that darn problem whether it was in one of those it changes whether that went downstream and killed that bot or what the hell happened so now you add a human being for every 15 20 maybe 30 bots of serious nature you will need one human being 
If you have hundreds of them, you do the math and you start getting. So your <laughs> ROI very quickly is starting to get eroded away. So the unfortunate part, I mean, to long story short, is that this is the part which perhaps does not even get calculated business-wise. And, and we start seeing that the ROI doesn't come up, especially in places where every small cent, every small pesa that is being spent is very crucial because it adds up, it multiplies up very rapidly. Manufacturing is one of them, right? And, and we know, so one cent shaved off a door of a car very quickly multiplies up. In some places, I have also seen, for example, completely not RPA related, not automation related. So here is this large BPO for a company, I mean, relatively speaking, of course, some three, 400 people working off. And I was talking to Papita the other day about this, running off from a high real estate cost area in Chennai. Now, even if I were to run whatever form of RPA, and it's, believe me, it's, it's required. So even if you were to run it, from the same location with some of those same people, how much money will it possibly shave? On top of that, you have a BAU situation where you're going to put people to uh, locate problems and so on and maintenance and, and so on, right? Your ROI overall, your business case overall is already short because you're in a costly place, costly location. So downstream, everything is going to always keep going south. So you're adding more, more and more money to the same problem, more and more money to the sinkhole. So it's very often, unfortunately, it's a business problem which goes and sinks this. Uh, so uh, Suhas, uh, really good points there. And uh, like I just like uh, declutter and uh, layer uh, certain uh, comments that you uh, made, right? Like, you know, uh, one pertaining to the ROI. As it is true with any other software or any other technology that companies onboard, it's very important that we show our clients how they benefit from immediate implementation of a technology. So uh, you also mentioned uh, about like RPA companies going with uh, the solutions, right? Like uh, on the contrary, like, you know, what we uh, tell our clients is to tie this up with their digitization strategy, right? Like, you know, of course, like, you know, when the company wants to just get started with RPA or intelligent automation, they go with few low hanging fruits, like I said, and then automate that, then get the result out of it and showcase to the management. But if they really want to be successful in their RPA implementation, then they have to tie this up with the larger digitization, digital transformation kind of a initiative. Sorry, sorry, I'll so, interrupt. If the point is that they don't, that's exactly what the point is. Uh, so uh, maybe most of them, yes, but there are few people who definitely do, right? Like, you know, uh, uh, there are, I, I largely deal with these global in-house centers and uh, these GICs definitely sort of like, you know, uh, it, 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 see, it's it's as simple, right? Like, you know, if they don't automate and if they don't digitize, somebody in their parent company or somebody else will automate and take away these jobs in any case, right? So we are not telling, we are not going to have this uh, people reduction kind of a conversation here. But uh, uh, these GICs always tend to sort of like, you know, uh, plug this RPA into their larger digital transformation journey. So, where sorry, they define, yeah. allow, allow, me to, allow me to interrupt again. Yeah, yeah sure. So, GICs are very different. GICs are very different. MNCs are very different. We're talking about Indian business. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Very different. You know, the, the the level of maturity and is very, very different here. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I 100% yeah. agree with you. And, and it, I just want to make another point here, mm -hmm. uh, which I think will uh, be relevant to what Soha said as well as you said. Uh, you know, I think a lot of the Indian and, and technology providers or consulting providers because you need consulting as well as technology all of that go together you know into a successful business uh, automation project uh, i think you know a lot of the companies and this is one thing we the first thing that we changed when we entered into business process automation is that you have to move out from a conventional project mindset to say hey customer i am coming in i'll charge you uh, say 20 lakhs of rupees and uh, this is the scope of work that i'll do and period beyond this I have no responsibility. I have no liability. That doesn't work. As you rightly pointed out, uh, uh, Murali, you were talking about, you know, failures, errors, who's responsible. We have to become outcome or success focused for the customer. It's not just about drawing a scope of work and charging the customer a certain amount of money. So, and the outcome when I talk of business process automation is very clear. I mean, we work on three things. Either there is a cost saving, clearly measurable cost saving. Either there's a time or a tax saving. Can I do something faster? Can I go to market? Can I go back to my customer faster? Or there is an improvements in the quality, which means the compliance of what I'm doing. 
and all these things are very clearly measurable but providers in general i've seen and and we are also working on you know creating models where we can take responsibility for this because you always have always have to manage your own liability but it has to be outcome based that okay this is this is the roi i want to achieve and this is the outcome and and uh, so has to your point uh, you know then the whole thing comes together what are the people i need what are the tools i need what are the process because you're Absolutely. taking responsibility for the outcome uh, i think that is that is what has to change a lot in the indian technology provider landscape you know us taking responsibility and driving a certain outcome and taking responsibility to drive that out Yeah, but much of these companies, you see, what ends up happening? You're right, Sarika. So many of these companies, they do not want to spend a whole lot of money on IT or technology. And in many of these cases, and I have seen fairly large companies, owners of those companies, going and mentioning that IT and technology are unfortunately necessary evils. I mean, however nasty this sounds, but that is reality because they can choose to. without investing in technology like that they can put a bunch of bodies and it's okay if there are 300 people sitting there working and doing the same repetitive work they don't care it's all, it's all right and for them every paisa fine perhaps it should paisa actually starts mattering so they are very loath to be able to go invest in technology related solutions which seem very high fangled to be able to go invest money in that and then on top of that for running those you need more human beings to come in and, and spend more money and that starts sort of eroding everything and because you're looking at it not from just the employee's perspective you're not looking at it from the customer's perspective you're looking at only from inward focus my own perspective and the entire thing starts changing right your your uh, attitude towards automation becomes very very different and i'm not saying it's good or bad but That's the way it is. I have a perspective. It's very interesting that uh, we are talking about real problems, right? While I agree agree with Suha's perspective as well as Sarika's perspective, some of the ground reality is that when you introduce an automation or technology, you probably need an experts to come in and help you on that. And in terms of process, what it does is it creates a digital divide. Within the organization, people who know about technology, who only can maintain and uh, support that, versus the field-level people who may not have the necessary skills and training to even manage or operate on that. For example, if you put an operation process in that, and you are not getting the necessary ROI, or you have some problems. the implementation will come back and tell you oh you configured it wrong you didn't understand the process something is you has to be your mistake it's not automation and you know that is again putting the people on a defensive step so we need to probably uh, figure out pivot and figure out a method in which you have to make it collaborative and figure out outcome based make it work together and take responsibilities for some of the deliveries as well but again you know if you if that spin into that it may not work for a product vendor because their cost will go up so you know you need to kind of uh, figure out on a case to case basis as to how it works so it's not a easy problem to look at it and say you know this industry is not adapting or there are people who are adapting it fast even there you know sometimes you know I, i'm going back to so as comment uh, not necessarily everything need to have a, a roi right you know sometime uh, you need to adapt technology even to survive in the field you know there has been you know the cases of kodak or you know the cloud sweeping everything you know we know as a, a example all the time so is is automation that kind of a force we need to think about it and educate our people on that and make sure that they are ready to do the investment and be ready to be the fittest in the survivability mechanism if you will so i think it is a dynamic situation and you know both the vendors and uh, the consumers will have to work together and evolve a standard methodology to make sure that automation works for them there is no magic pill that you say you know buy this uh, software implement it it will work or you know hire this consultant 
you will get the best ROI. I am not sure if this is going to work. I, I tend to agree, Murli. I, I also will extend what you were saying by mentioning that when a company is fighting for survival, if it goes and invests in automation, that is ROI actually. I mean, it might not be directly out in terms of money coming back, but survival, oh yeah, <laughs> that's ROI. There's a very interesting question from Rajesh from Telepixels. When you say that you really can't force put automation into an existing process, but create new processes that could exist, you know, with automation within itself, that's designed to be automated, right? So he wants to know how do you uh, approach creating process using tools in runtime and then apply your automation. Uh, particularly in airlines, governments, and hospitals, because of uh, this pandemic situation, that's those are the industries that are really impacted. Let, let me take a f first crack at that, and then uh, you can pass it to over. In most of these cases, you might have a situation where you perhaps need to reimagine that process, keeping the business outcome in mind. What is it that you wanted that process, regardless of the current process or whatever new stuff you wanted to you wanted to do. What do you want that thing to do? Whether it's, uh, do you want to create customer stickiness? Do you just want to uh, hasten up the customer interaction time? Or So stop thinking perhaps of the technology or the process at for a point of time, figure out what the outcome is, start walking backwards, reimagine it to figure out, all right, now how do I use technology to be able to run this new imagined way of doing things? So it might end up being a completely a technology driven process, if you will, a completely new imagined process, or it could be a process which is supported by technology. So you start looking at it backward. You don't create the process and then figure out what the outcome is. You start walking backwards from there. Right. So Suhas, uh, uh, let me turn the tables a little bit here and understand from your perspective right like you know now technologies like rpa and intelligent automation have actually uh, proved their value uh, largely in the global landscape and uh, it's beginning to prove its value in india let's see let's put it that way um uh, so from your point of view in order to sort of increase the penetration and uh, make it more say widely adapted technology uh, what do you think are the first few steps uh, or the homework that the Indian businesses will have to do? Two larger, bigger things. My second point, which I'll come to in a oh. second, uh, will, will actually draw from what you had mentioned earlier, Pritham. The first is the mindset. What is it that I'm wanting to do? So can we start thinking about the customer? Can we start yeah. making our businesses a little more people-oriented, people-focused? And by people, I mean the customer. I mean vendors, partners, associates, employees, everybody. So it's not just about thinking or tracking just those dollars or, or rupees. If you think about the people that you're dealing with, the people that you're wanting to sell to, the people that you're interacting and working with, the money will follow. And I, I say this with, with a huge amount of validation which comes from the entire startup world. All the unicorns that we are seeing, some of them are profit making, not profit making, doesn't matter. But, but the amount of turnover that they are, they are pushing through, that tells, tells you about what customer orientation can do. So that's one one large bucket. Yeah. Second, definitely, and both you and I talked about it with them. You're going to start thinking about it larger scale, enterprise wide. You're going to start thinking about it. What will my enterprise look like post my digital transformation, if that is what you're doing? If you're starting to think automation, can I start thinking about automation across my business processes? Can I start thinking about how those will come together, integrate together? We talk about enterprise architecture from a technology point of view. Can I start thinking about enterprise business architecture? Once those two start merging, the magic starts to happen. Today, business processes don't talk. We deal with silos and hence the technology which is crammed on top of those business processes, all sorts of cycles. It never will come together otherwise, right? I, I think you had hinted about that just a while back. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Suhas. I'll hand over the mic to Suresh. Okay, a couple of things. See, I, I manage uh, automation both regionally as well as globally for my company. Uh, and a couple of things that I probably could share with you guys is uh, automation is really making a lot of sense for us globally. But locally, we have a lot of challenges. So the way we are trying to deal with it locally is 
to add on to something that suhas was mentioning either it's problem driven or outcome driven right so let's say for example i'm just taking an example of manufacturing otd we want to improve otd to 90% let's say from 40% what are the different things we can do to improve to 90% now, automation is not the only answer but automation could be a contributor to move the needle right so rather than fitting automation as a solution into a business we are looking at more what is the pro- problem what is the process what is the benefit and then see whether rpa fits into it especially process automation the other thing in india that we are seeing as a big problem it's it's not cost effective right look at the technology the cost that we have to pay to run a platform have a platform have people and the people who are going to provide you services don't have any domain knowledge most of the time and it is relied on the functional expert on the business side right so we are actually automating what the functional person is telling us not the sme kind of a knowledge coming into picture right and that's why we we end up with so many errors or so many changes that are coming up after a bot is put in place or an automation is put in place now i am struggling a lot to get that sme who has that knowledge of automation as well as domain knowledge right so that we hear what the business is telling us but we are not automating that process we are actually automating what is automatable and what makes sense lot uh, from a long term perspective at least a year the bot should survive right most of our bots die in 6 months or 8 months be- even before you start getting the return so then what's the point in putting a bot uh, we- actually that's why we have a measurement to figure out what is the cut a particular automation kind of a scenario should should minimum qualify before even it becomes automatable or else it's going to be a liability for us 12 months from from now um uh, yes uh, i agree with suresh i'd like to just bring in uh, uh, my perspective here uh, so uh, what suresh said is absolutely right when uh, we don't get the right sme or the functional expert to sort of come and tell us way to automate right so what i feel lacking also in our indian businesses is the top down approach right like you know the leaders at the top i definitely feel a little bit more uh, education and posturing in their head about automation has to be bought in so that is when they can just uh, bring all the folks together uh, to sort of like you know create this sort of center of excellence kind of a model where we have the business sme where we have the technology people and where we also have the operations and uh, audit people to sort of like you know move the uh, things forward this would also sort of like you know really bring up the automation adoption in indian business so- so pritham that's a very good theory but practically let me tell you nobody has time to spend on to find out what is automatable or not automatable from the business side they are busy running the business making the money right with the given challenges right right suresh if i may uh, just step in i mean what you said is so valid and you know so practical as to and we see that on the ground is the process really ready to be taken to rpa i mean is is always the million dollar question i mean does because rpa is a great technology and obviously as an organization have processes does that mean that there's an immediate marriage possible i think not i think you as you very rightly said the process has to reach so there is a there is an evolution right so i'm moving from manual i have to first move to a certain level of process automation before i can think of rpa because when you have automated the process what it means is that you have kind of defined a set of rules and a set of uh, workflows or a set of steps which are followed repetitively as well as business rules uh, that happen and you have to evolve you cannot just shut down a manual process and say because rpa is great i can move to it it doesn't work number one number two as you rightly said the cost is very high Uh, you can never justify the cost if you are trying to say automate one or two processes it, it just doesn't work out because the entire cost of the bot or the platform that gets distributed over those couple of processes and that in the indian context because one another challenge that i see here suresh which uh, all companies face is that most of the rpa vendors are you know still working out their costs and they are not yet adopted adapted i would say to the indian market or the indian economy or the indian currency it's all dollar pricing which kind of is you know built for a more advanced market so that's another challenge we have today they are working on that but they need to work on that so right now if you're just starting with automating a couple of processes it becomes very expensive 
and hence here i see there is a need for pay as you go models to come up in the rpa space also versus you know me buying the entire orchestrator and the infrastructure it was very expensive i need to be able to use a cloud platform a pay as you go get those couple of processes right or then i know you have to work in a proof of concept and in a kind of an agile mode where your process will you know keep changing prove the concept and the vendor has to have a skin in that game and has to be responsible for your success these, these are the points i i wanted to make so i hope you find them relevant yeah yeah and maybe i can add see uh, for for most of the indian companies at least for my india region one of the things we are trying to do is like india is struggling really especially in an mnc world where india is also a pnl they are trying to prove their metal making more sales making more services that's where their time and effort goes right and obviously they don't have the the case to spend the money on automation so that's not the focus right now um, and look at the cost of a resource in india i mean it doesn't really justify for a bot or automation but one of the things we are trying to do is um, obviously we are maybe some uh, some indian companies can see if it makes sense for them is citizen developers we are not going to bring developers we are not going to bring vendors we are going to make business there are a lot of business people who are it savvy they know things they they do lot of stuff without our knowledge right they do wonderful excel macros they do, they do lot of stuff which we don't know on their day to day work to keep their job very simple how can we tap into those people make them more citizen citizen developers to create their own bots and then they become the ambassadors right and then they then they would start thinking what we can automate which would make more sense for us i mean that's one of the things probably which we are trying which i would say globally we have not yet tried that in india but that's that's another way to look at to bring up adoption Right, thank absolutely. you so much Rajesh, for bringing in that yes. interesting perspective. I'll quickly hand over the mic to Rajesh as well, so that he can make his point. So until Rajesh um, makes a request, I would like to pose the question to Murli there. How do you humanize this automation, particularly in systems of engagement where you have customer interactions? You really want the customer to still have a superior experience, even though the backend processes or the frontend systems are automated. How do you make sure you have a balance? What is the success is secret sauce there? I lost you a bit uh, at the end, but I think your question was more on thoughts around user experience, human interactions. with respect to automation uh, so you know based based on uh, my experience uh, some of the topics are some of the points we already talked about it uh, but to answer the question and to get a summary effect for the question i think you know whether it is technology related automation uh, front end based automation or even at the back end it supported automation which will be you look at it uh there is a user that is consuming the automation and it has to be from the user perspective you know even if you have to go to something like a design thinking to make sure that you are servicing the user then that will give a holistic perspective and it may not have the roi number uh but still people may be able to relate to the value of the automation that can be brought in in terms of adopting a technology over a period of time if you will right you know there are uh, several uh, example that that you could be quoting on that and uh, uh, we are talk though we are talking in the indian context uh, though largely uh, it has worked well in the uh, abroad or elsewhere in the de- developed countries there are several cases where you know that is they have blind spot as well those are all mostly configuration related or uh, it is related to your bug in the software you know this kind of uh, aspect also comes into that so in terms of making sure the automation works end to end you have to make sure that it is also operationally supported you know that is where you know i think some of the gaps comes as well so i think you know my emphasis i would put that that you make sure that the consumer of the automation services is satisfied from the service perspective if you are able to do that then you are in a good wicket if you will 
So I'll hand over the mic to Rajesh. Yeah, hi. Thanks, Kaushik, uh, for letting me know about this uh, event. Yeah, I know it's a um, trend about the automation in India, but I want to bring in a real use case which I'm working on. Uh, it can fit into any anywhere. Instead of talking about the concepts and how do you approach, I'll come to the straight away to the problem which we are trying to solve we have to dealt with you know a lot of real-time data especially on this pandemic where you know like the data is from the trace and track which is coming in from different devices and we build a data pipeline uh, where the data are flowing in from uh, different tests and also from uh, people who swiped in and all this stuff the ecosystem uh, starting from uh, the airline industry to the hospital industry to the councils to a lot, um, you know, like uh, budgets are to do a restriction in a particular area, particular streets. It's a big trouble. Forget about automation, RP or uh, business process, but to initially to design a process with this data, the data, I have a data now. I cleaned up the data. I applied analytics. I got the data in a very granular level. And using this data, I need a solution. You put it any name, automation or uh, workflow, whatever it is, I don't mind. But with this data, can we able to do a process and then apply your process automation using whatever tool, UI path or Blue Prism doesn't mind? How, uh, is there anything out there? Because we are trying to find a solution for it. If it is there, we can discuss about, about this. It will be nice for us. Yes, the answer is yes. Typically, this is like any ways a completely a feedback loop. I mean, you are starting with the data, but even otherwise, if you weren't, you know, a process would typically gather data. You would do your insights on the data. You would get some information from the data using which you would apply feedback to the process. So this is anyways a complete cycle which typically works and that's how you constantly evolve and constantly improve your processes. In your case, it's a very interesting scenario and I would really like to talk more to you about it as to because you're starting with the data. You're, you're starting with those insights. Uh, but any which ways, uh, yes, the answer to your question is yes. Yes, I'd just like to add uh, one more point uh, to Rajesh's statement here. Uh, so uh, when you are approaching uh, the problem or, or when you're approaching this pain point in terms of finding a solution, uh, don't go with the mindset that only RPA is the solution or RPA is the silver bullet. So there are a lot of other technologies combined with RPA will give you a much better output, right? Like, you know, in terms of adapting NLP or chatbots or machine learning, etc. So uh, my suggestion to you is like, you know, look at it in a much broader way and just pick up all the solutions that are currently available in the market and then uh, design your solution accordingly. Thank you so much, Preetam and Sarika. I think that brings us to the end of this conversation. I really don't know how the 60 minutes has pa have passed. Thank you so much, audience, for joining us this evening. Uh, we really hope you got a lot of practical and handy tips that will help you in, on your automation journey at your organization. Thank you so much from all of us at the Chetina team. We'll catch up with you with another interesting topic on 18th of December. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Namaste.